very crucial question to start off with. Describe the world in 20 years' time. Where, where is blockchain and cryptocurrencies in 20 years' time? One, 30 seconds each. In my opinion, blockchain is going to actually fundamentally change the way that we invest money. Uh, because at the moment, the tier settlement services we have are totally dysfunctional. And I see blockchain actually providing a solution to be able to trade anything from anywhere on any market around the world. 20, 30 years time, there'll be no fear of currency. Everything will be cryptocurrency. Governments will have pure cryptocurrency. Blockchain is going to get mapped in the next two to three years, then around 20 years. Okay. Um. I suppose I, I'm not sure the world's late sphere. Um, we still have checkbooks, so I find that quite strange. Uh, but I think there's definite development in the blockchain world in terms of both public and private blockchains. I think we'll see some bigger players entering the space. I think there will be some people looking to use private blockchains for their own commercial benefit, but then I also see the way that we're dealing with having public blockchains to improve decentralization as well. So, I think we'll probably still be discussing it a little bit 20 years later, but I do think everyone will have more access to that. We'll be 20 years further on, uh, power supply permitting. Uh, blockchain, I haven't really think anything to add to that. Interesting point about cryptocurrencies. I think that cryptocurrencies will be regulated, it will be mainstream, and then the circle will start again. Because everyone who got into cryptocurrency in the first place got into it for a specific reason. That was the lack of control and the freedom it gave them to manage their own affairs without having someone devaluing the, uh, the money that they're carrying in their wallet. When you have regulation, when you have mass acceptance, that freedom, I think, will deliver and all the agitators who agitated for cryptocurrency in the first place will move on from that and will probably have crypto two, perhaps even crypto three. All right, interesting points of view. So before I got into redesigning human minds into a state of perfection, I was designing all sorts of tech systems uh, and I did call myself user experience designer. And what that means is that we enable people to adopt technologies in a broader, easier, more accessible, usable, fun, enjoyable way. So the question is, how are we going to make blockchain technologies more easily accessible and adopted across the world? Some points of view on that. If you don't have a pass on to a speaker next to you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Well, actually, in, in my company, Tipsy, we're bringing in um, uh, gaming. We're adding gaming. Um, I know I don't think that uh, wrong. We're adding gaming to add some things, get people in, in, into it, bidding for it, or whatever. But um, I do think myself that young people already. They send flowers, digital flowers, not normal flowers. If I send digital flowers, I would have no girlfriend. So what I'm saying to you is things are changing. Young people love, love, love anything digital. And that's the space we're going to go into. Yeah, guys, don't send your girlfriends digital flowers. <laughs> <laughs> just, just don't. <laughs> um, I think the most important thing with adoption is making sure that we are trying these use cases with real people. If blockchain technology is connecting real life with digital, virtual life, then we need to test the real life element. We need to get out there, work with our users, our patients, the doctors, the gamers, they're everybody that is going to be using our platform. And we need to be testing and trialing this. And that's what's so important about our pilot on the 23rd, um, is the fact that we are releasing a version one in which we will have our UX, our focus group team, our patient engagement team, our clinical engagement team, all listening to what people want from their technology and that a little bit of fun. Always like fun. Adoption. Massive. Well, digital flowers wrong for me, but uh, <laughs> that's a different matter. I don't think there's any secret uh, to this that people haven't already come across and discovered before. It's having a a real reason for people to use these apps and then making it as easy as possible for them to get to where they need to be. Nothing more than that. Convenience. 
All right, now I want to talk to you, uh, following on from Fresh Mind uh, program, I have stepped into my own sovereignty after doing Fresh Mind. So I want to talk about concept of sovereignty. Blockchain, all, blockchain gives us all sovereignty, okay, over our own data and independence. Ownership. Ownership, Ownership. Yeah. and sovereignty, really, okay? Uh, control over what we create what and uh, own. So I want to hear your thoughts on the concept of being sovereign, sovereign person that is collaborating with the rest of the world through choice, not through kind of systemic oppression, quote unquote. That's a difficult question. <laughs> uh, I suppose the easy answer to this is why did we have cryptocurrency in, uh, emerge in the first place, other than a reaction to a lack of control. Uh, so I guess that's the simple answer. Uh, this is what blockchain is enabling, or certainly what true public uh, blockchain is enabling, rather than the private blockchain we refer, refer to. Uh, but I'm not going to get into whether pure sovereignty uh, and what happens when one sovereign person has a dispute with another sovereign person who has another dispute with sovereign, another sovereign person and who has a dispute with another sovereign person because we've been here all night. And I guess that's why we're all developed because when two sovereign people uh, have different points of view, what do you do to solve the dispute that's arisen? And I guess that's why concepts have more evolved, but that's another matter. Um, I think we're talking about ownership and sovereignty and us managing everything. I think the key thing we need to look at is um, solutions for identity management um, using blockchain technology. I know there's quite a lot of people working on this, um, how we manage our individual identities. If we're going to want to be able to do things and transact and be accountable as well for things, as well as managing our own data, uh, I think that's really the key um, moving forward to looking at identity management. Yeah, ideas and cars, that will be blockchain. I think there's probably a hundred blockchains at the moment, which about 60 are in China. It's going to condense to a small group. But I think myself, it's going to go political. I think people are going to go on a chain that they feel confident on, like a Democrat. In America at the moment, the Democrats and Republicans, there's a massive, massive, massive divide. And I can see people going on a blockchain that's Democrat and no one else, and people on that blockchain will not let anyone else in. That's how I see things going. Things go into, you said identity, who you are. You might go on a, a chain, pet lovers or whatever like this. I see things happen because, oh, silly ways. I, mean, I think in your class, one of the things that we want to, to sort of empower people with is, is their ability to make their own decisions in how they transact. Um, we're looking at being able to provide people with the ability to buy their own property, but we want to be totally flexible. So as long as they're meeting their rental commitments, if they're saying, I want to pay extra this month because I've had a bonus, I want to be able to pay off a large chunk of, you know, or, or acquire a large chunk of the property, we want to be able to do that. We don't want any sort of penalising of, oh, you can't do that because you're getting ahead of your plan or you're falling behind on your plan. We want to make it so that actually the blockchain is able to deliver that independent flexibility within the business model. And I think that's something that the banks are totally dead set against. Sorry, can I just one more thing? Sure, always give the lawyer an extra chance to say things. <laughs> I do have targets to meet, bills to deliver, so that's why I'm No, no, the serious point is sovereignty uh, is about managing relationships, it's about ownership, and I guess that's why we have GDPR, because it took the EU an awful long time to cotton on to the fact that there is it's not just muck and brass uh, or brass in muck, there's brass in data. Uh, so what do I own? Uh, what do I have to give permission to people to use with information that relates to me? Can I even give them information about certain things? If someone comes across my data on the web, what can they use it for? Do they have to tell me about it? Uh, it's all very interesting, very complicated matters about ownership and individual rights versus common good, etc. And if you've ever got time to read the 80, 90 introductory pages to the GDPR legislation and you're into that thing, I suggest you do because you'll find a lot of interesting thoughts there.
All right, so if, does anyone else have a question rather than me so they're just popping their head as they come to mind? Uh, please do. Uh, with regards to sovereignty, I think it's, it's very interesting. Uh, so, for example, with GDPR, I know quite a bit about GDPR, so I've touched it on, on compliance. Um, the thing is, the companies still have a lot of power. So basically, it is, well, you either accept our terms or you don't have our service. It's as simple as that. So the individual doesn't really have much more power, that much more power than they, than they had before, really, um, if they want that service. Um, and also, with regards to now, yeah, I, I'm slightly a bit of an anarchist, I guess, <laughs> although I don't think it's necessarily realistic. Um, so I think there are laws and regulations, some laws and regulations are there for a very good reason. And I think that obviously we know that um, uh, cryptocurrencies will probably be used for um, uh, evading little, some, some rules, obviously. Yeah. Um, so, would, would you like to comment on those things? Oh. Yeah. Okay, I'll be right. So, a little quick. Yeah, have a call. Yeah. The, the way that the cryptocurrencies get around the SEC is by it's got to be a token based solution. The problem is with a lot of ICOs, they're just roadmaps, things that might happen. In actual fact, 80 are naps in a time that never happen. So really, if you're going to get into a coin, look for the people. You don't want to get to a place, you put a thousand pounds in, they've got a dog and a cat there in the office. You want someone who's got a team down, with lawyers behind them, uh, due diligence behind them, as you know, like I have with my companies. Um, but yeah, that's the way so it's just maybe coming back to the point of GDPR, and, and there are there's quite a few lawyers that are specifically um, specialising in GDPR for um, blockchain companies, and I assume Simmons and Simmons doing quite a lot of stuff with that. Um, I suppose in answer to um, your comment on sharing data because you have to to access a service. Now, I suppose this is where using uh, some of the permission-based blockchains that allow for that granularity, allow you to choose to share, some of your data, rather than having to give all of it, could be an option for services like that. I mean, for example, WhatsApp. I don't remember having any choices as to what I could do, what I can't do. It's like, well, here are your terms, you read them, and you yeah. accept them, so or you don't use WhatsApp. Yeah, I mean, as far as I'm aware, and correct me if I'm wrong because I'm, I'm not a lawyer, but with GDPR, when you sign up to something, it's an opt-in, and they have to make it very clear exactly what you're opting in for now. So I suppose if we're developing blockchain projects now, we're, we're developing them with GDPR in mind. Every business or everything that existed prior to GDPR could never have built it with GDPR in mind. So I think that's, that's a good thing for a lot of us. Absolutely better than nothing, but what I'm saying is some large companies in particular you don't, like, you don't really have a choice if you want to use So, off the, if you go on WhatsApp, you're not getting adverts, so they expect something back, the data back, but you're not getting all the other ones, they've got adverts, they don't take your data, and it's what the person don't want to pay the money, and that's what works down to money for you. Well, uh, believe it or not, I'm a lawyer, even though I don't have time. Uh, happily, I'm not a GDPR expert, so that's my kind of cop out. Uh, on GDPR, I would say that I think that the intention behind the regs were well-meaning, but you are right, it can be a completely damn squib to the extent that if I want, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. It, if I want the service, quite often I have no choice but to take everything that they throw or don't use the service at all. Uh, that's my own experience. Uh, so yes, I agree with your comment there, but there we go. Uh, and you're also right about cryptocurrencies. They were used to do an awful lot of naughty things, money launder, buy things that weren't legal, etc., etc. That's why they had, have, to a lesser degree, such a bad press. That's why ICOs, one of the reasons why I think ICOs have a bad reputation uh, still, although it's getting better because of a lack of trust, 
and that's why I think regulation will, although taking away part of the freedom and the libertarianism that was behind the creation of the concept of cryptocurrencies, will help them achieve a greater market penetration. Uh, I know checkbooks are about, uh, I think that crypto will probably knock checkbooks on the head. Equally, I don't think they're ever going to replace. Uh, they will be a form, they will be a part of the financial system. I don't think they will dominate the financial system. Okay, so I will ask you a question about the future. So, but I'm asking about the funding of your entrepreneurial ventures and the legal perspective from whether it's ICO or token. Now, ultimately, I, I don't think I've ever seen an ICO with a, a business plan. It's got cash in it. I've seen a few people, I've seen a few uh, projections, but, but rarely have I ever seen anyone with the levels of that. A business plan projection. So what I'm interested in is, you know, your funding of your entities. You're seeking half a million sterling. Uh, I'm guessing it's equity, right? Well, yeah. A lot more. A lot more. Yeah. 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 ICOs, or whether it's a coin or a token, are they selling a security where the people who sell that security ultimately are going to be uh, really in, in, in potential peril, particularly if they sell it to US investors? Yeah, so. All right, so that's a bunch of ideas there in terms of how are you going to manage your cash flow and regulations in future. Let's start from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, right, okay, uh, absolutely. I mean, one of, the, one of the things that when I was looking at um, establishing your castle, I saw and went in to look at a whole load of different ICOs that were out there. I was quite frankly appalled at the, the quality of uh, what they refer to as a white paper, which has practically nothing in terms of a business plan, no understanding of financial projections, uh, and you know, my, my background. Uh, is that um, I, I'm actually a, a corporate advisor and I put together prospectuses for market listings. Uh, so I started off with saying, look, I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to do this properly. I'm going to put in a good, sound management team. I've got lawyers on board. I've got property guys. I've got, I've got crypto guys, especially that's on board as advisors. But I wanted to look fundamentally at building a business plan that stacks up financially. I've done financial profiling left, right and centre till I'm blue in the face with it, and, and then having built that, that sort of business model, I'm now looking at going out and raising equity to build the platform to do it properly, rather than just go out and take money from anybody where I have little chance of succeeding. I'm, if I can build the platform, we've got institutions that are saying, we will fund property purchases for you. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Hi. Hi. When I started my technology business, it was a little bit like Dragon's Den. I went in the room, I got people told me the idea I had, I eventually got some to invest, and I got my technology business. I'm going for the ICO, I can probably go between six and 20 million on the first round on, on the ICO. I expect it to go quite quickly, because I've already got a platform, I've already, thanks to my developer there, created software that's worth a lot of money anyway. So I would say I've already got an ecosystem. By the way, you said one thing about the regulations. The, the Americans, it's, it's the fact that people invent a token. The pretend token is not really a token. My system is a token system. People use a the token to get a deal, then use the token to advertise. So I've got an actual token system. But I agree, 90, 95%, it's not really a token, it's, it's an investment. I suppose I'm in the lucky position that I'm, in, I'm not sitting here pitching an ICO because we actually did ours um, and we raised 24 million in February. Um, I think it's an interesting concept, this idea of is a token a security? Is it a utility? Oh, and I think the answer to that is we still don't know with a lot of them. And particularly over in the US, they are starting to have more discussions. I don't know if anyone watched last week on Parliament TV, they actually did have a discussion on asset classifications of, of tokens. So it is worth keeping up with what Parliament is saying about these things. Um, but we are a utility that uses utility token that uses a double loop system. So I suppose 
we got complimented on the fact that there was a use for the token, the fact that you could pay with the token, but you could also then use it for something else which makes it a utility versus maybe some things that are property wise. I don't know what. It's an ecosystem. An ecosystem. Yeah, I'll, I'll just a security token. Yeah, exactly. As simple as that. So you set it out from the word yeah. and set it out from the word. So I think anyone answer. that's dealing with anything to do with property is now going out and saying we are a security. So, yeah, it's still a grey area, though. Thank you. Uh, two points were made. I think the first point, not having seen a white paper with a uh, with a solid business plan, plan behind it. So, uh, two points made. The first point, not having seen a white paper without a solid business plan behind them. I guess that the white papers you've seen fall into the, it's 75% of the ICOs that, uh, if they do get off the ground, never do anything they raise. Uh, I really can see no point whatsoever in having an ICO unless there's a solid business case behind it. Uh, why bother? No point in doing it. Secondly, uh, regulatory position in the UK, crypto. Just said, there's a difference between having a, a, a solid business case and, and being transparent with it, you know, ultimately. Because if the security, if it comes to an ICO as a security or a, a coin or a token is, then ultimately there needs to be you know, some level of security for the purchaser to do a due diligence. So it's not whether there is a business case. It's whether that has any level of risk factors and transparency, My wife clarity on the projection. I've got the lawyers, you, you check everything about them. Look at the team. I've got my team, 30 people wrote down it. You've got to show people who you are. No, you can go on LinkedIn, look at them all, check them out. Well, well I, guess, I guess if it, if, I guess if it, if it was an illusion, when it comes, when it eventually comes to light that it's an illusion, people would be saying they want to money back. Uh, there's a lot I could say, but I think time's running out, so I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> all right, we, we've literally run out of time, but there's still some time to network and nibbles um, if there's anything left. And, uh, you know, we have to be out of here by nine, so thank you very much for participating.